And now, on This Week in History with Paul Waite. Hello. Hello. Hello, I'm Paul Waite. Hello. Hello, Drew. Wait, wait for the listeners. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm just waving to those of you in film land, <laughs> as opposed to those of you listening. So, of course, if you were on the radio, you wouldn't know I was waving to you, no. unless you had a very good imagination. Yeah, mm. just imagine anyway, it. Today, we have the most facts ever oh, that nice. I've gone for in a week. Um, and it's a shame, because some of them I could talk about for ages. Um, I'm starting off with the first one today, which is very, very poignant. Uh, and, for, and, and Callum was with me. For this very special day we had, um, in 73 AD, Masada mm. fell to the Romans, uh, which ended the Jewish revolt. Um, I would say that one of the best days of my life, beyond all doubt, is uh, the Waite family, who were on holiday in Israel, spent uh, the morning uh, touring Masada mm. uh, around the old fort, uh, and then in the afternoon, we went to the Dead Sea. Oh, nice. I've got to tell a funny story about this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Callum goes to the Dead Sea, and because uh, of salt in it, it obviously made his bottom sting, etc. It didn't happy. make my bottom sting. <laughs> and he's looking, looking at me like, I betrayed him, this beautiful little boy who loved his daddy. And it's like, Dad, right. you made me walk I, into this. St- well, I don't know why he said my bottom. Literally, I had sunburn. I had really bad but, sunburn, and yeah. the sea was so salty, it Ooh, burnt my skin. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. But um, Masada was almost like a spiritual experience. And effectively, what happened is, is that... Uh, uh, the Jews uh, basically were on top of this uh, very, very well defended hill uh, and they managed to uh, hold out for, I think it's about six months. And the Romans, being the Romans, were very ingenious, ended up mm-hmm. building uh, all sorts of wonderful gadgetry to get mm-hmm. themselves up to the top. And rather than being taken prisoner by the Romans, they all committed suicide to, to a man mm. and woman and child. Wow. Uh, and it's just it was just an amazing experience. I have to say, um, it, 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 it was, I don't know, talk about energy. Staying mm. in the place, you know, it was, it was, it. it was just uh, Feel the, the, really the imprint, really mm. beautiful. In 1397, Geoffrey Chaucer tells the Canterbury Tales for the first time oh, at cool. the court of Richard II. Very nice. Uh, so Chaucer, probably the first acknowledged great author, I would say. Mm. Um, so those of you who haven't read any of Chaucer, it's quite interesting. So you've got like the Knight's Tale, and the Bishop's Tale, and the Merchant's Tale, yeah, and the not you know all this sort of thing. So it's um, very interesting. Of course, it was written in um, Middle English mm. at the time. So that in itself uh, is something uh, for another day, maybe. Um, in fifteen thirty four, Thomas More was confined to the Tower. Thomas More was a great man. Uh, played in the film Man for All Seasons by. Um, uh, Paul Schofield, one of the great Shakespearean actors, uh, one of the great acting performances of all time, actually. So uh, Thomas More was a man of great intelligence and huge principle who basically refused to kowtow to Henry VIII, saying that uh, he had, you know, he had wrongly, illegally married Catherine of Aragon. Mm. Thomas More basically took the Pope's side over Henry VIII, uh, and this led to his execution Ooh. and replacement by Thomas Cromwell. Um, mm. So, no quite a lot about this. It's uh, something I, I study a bit. So, moving on, if I can actually get 1606, uh, England adopts the Union flag, which mm. is quite distinct to the mm. Union Jack. Um, so, I think what we what we ought to do, Drew, is um, mm-hmm. put put up uh, a picture of both. Mm. Maybe. Oh, you're reading my mind. You're Isn't reading my Union mind. Is the flag actually, yeah? just Scotland and England? Uh, well, obviously, this is before um, 606, so it was before the um, Act of Union, the 1707. Mm. So it certainly wouldn't have had Ireland represented. Yeah, I'm pr- I, I can picture it in my head. I'm pretty sure it's I would have thought Scotland. it was England and Scotland. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. What date was that? Uh, 1606. It just looks It looks like an English flag on top of a Scottish flag, I'm pretty sure. I see it, what it looks mm. like. Yes, very really good. And yeah. then we have, in 1705... Queen Anne knights Isaac Newton, obviously one of the great people of all time. Uh, in 1746, we have the Battle of Culloden, which was the last battle on British soil. So we've talked about the Battle of Sedgemoor, which is no more than four miles from where we are today, uh, which was the last battle on English soil. And the Battle of Culloden was the last battle on British soil, where effectively um, the forces of King George... Uh, defeated the forces of Bonnie Prince Charlie. Bonnie mm-hmm. Prince despite, Charlie. And Jamie Fraser. And again, I, think, Jamie I Fraser, have been hey? to the battle site of Clodden twice. Uh, and contrary to myth and the sort of thing that 
Mel Gibson would say in a film. There were as many Scots fighting on the English mm. side as there were yeah. on really? Prince Charlie's side. Yeah, yeah. Of course. In fact, I watched a programme last week on YouTube about which clans were on which side. Mm. So effectively, mostly all the lowland, so people like the Campbells, mm. they fought for the English on the English side. Uh, and most of the Highland clans, but not exclusively. And you also had clans where um, half of them fought for the English and half fought for well, so half yeah, of them so the... fought half of them fought for George and half of them fought for Brendan Pierce Charles. Mm. Mm. Clans themselves were so that's, that's so I, I haven't done a very good job of um, getting us. So five minutes and thirty five seconds, and I've still got many to go. So I may not do it today. So next we have a great song from Elbow called Powder Blue. On this week in history. Welcome back to On This Week in History, and Paul's going to try really hard to get all these wonderful facts into the five minutes. In 1809, was the first ever 2,000 guineas horse race, which of course is run over the straight mile at Newmarket, mm. uh, one of my favourite um, things of the year. So this is basically the first classic race for three-year-old colts um, when, when, they, um, when they start the, the new season. Um, and beyond all doubt, the greatest performance of all time, in my opinion, was by Frankel, uh, who I remember made my hair stand on end watching the race. And I then, for those of you who like horse racing, go back and watch the greatest ever 2,000 guineas of all time, which was Brigadier Gerard beating Mill Reef and My Swallow, which is the highest quality horse race in history, in wow. my opinion. Um, in 1848, America invaded Mexico. Mm. Any excuse. Um, <laughs> in 1861, Robert E. Lee turns down the offer to command... The Union Army. So, of course, Robert E. Lee uh, was a man born in the South. He was the most important general in the American Army, USA Army. Um, and out of loyalty, he so he became the leader of the Confederate Army and fought against. But he was actually offered the command of both mm. armies, which is quite historically interesting, I think. Uh, and, of course, maybe what did wonder, maybe wonder what would have happened to Ulysses S. Grant Mm. If Robert E. Lee had in fact become the boss, because yeah. obviously Ulysses, I don't know that Ulysses S. Grant became He's the commander of the, of the Union, Union Army yeah. and then became the president of the United States. Mm. Um, about Would have ten changed years. the course of American yeah. history, sir. Isn't it amazing mm. what I know, Drew? Isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Actually. Yeah. Um, 1874. This is something I had a book when I was a little boy about David Livingstone. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything to do if I said David Livingstone to you? Can you think of anything? I would just think Livingstone is a is a race course. David Livingstone is. Uh, it isn't. David oh. Livingstone. <laughs> Stone, it was a Scottish explorer, uh, and, and and the most a thing that most people think is synonymous with David Livingstone is when he was a guy called Henry Morton Stanley, who was an American, went to Africa to try to find him. Mm. Um, and uh, when he met David Livingstone, this has gone down in history, he said, Livingstone, I presume. Have you heard that, mm. Callum? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Very yeah. famous uh, thing, Livingstone, I presume. Um, so... Um, Again, I encourage you to read David Livingstone's life story. Really mm. fascinating man. Uh, ended up dying in Africa. Um, he got poorly, I think. I think it didn't last very long after Stanley met him, if I, if I remember rightly. Um, 1849, sorry, out of sequence here. Hungary declared itself independent of Austria. Mm. Uh, quite interesting, this. I think Hungary is a fascinating country. I think, again, if you, um, if you want something to do one day, um, do a bit of research into... Um, the history of Central Europe, um, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, mm. and all the different political tensions and whatever going on that region. It's very interesting. Hungary is a, a country that, um, I suppose because out of loyalty as well, um, through my mates at SMD, um, I've really sort of got into Hungary. And also, of course, our own Adrian, who's mm. a wonderful young lady. Yeah, sure. Um, and moving on, we have in where do we? Where are we? Where are we now? So in 1912, we have uh, the Titanic sailed <gasps> to. Sorry, sank. I oh, start again. The Titanic sank at 2:27 a.m. off Newfoundland. Uh, desperately sad thing. Um, yeah. I don't know about you two. One of my greatest. I know this isn't going to happen, but if you said to me three things that scared a Blinking mm. thingies out of me. One is being burnt alive. Mm. Mm. Sure, that's from when second, you were a witch. Second is being attacked by a shark. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh. And thirdly, and this is, I have this really, and this is not, this is real serious stuff. I have this terrible fear Drowning. of uh, being in the sea mm. when a ship's going down, and the yeah. ship, 
and the ship bringing you down well, with it because obviously oh it, yeah the, the, like, the force of the ship yeah. going down would suck mm, you down yeah so like you, would you be say impossible. about submarines as well i've heard you say that oh yeah before, no, absolutely similar thing, absolutely yeah. you never know that could that could coincide with your fear of sharks as well because you could mm. be getting sucked down and a shark might come and take past you past life <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be awful wouldn't it could have been a past life could in, it embedded fear into your I Soul. wonder if you, you know, if you did get pulled down at that, what are the chances are you'd be able to get back up again? Mm. Mm. So 1923, insulin became generally available to diabetics. That's quite a, so if you think about it, you know, yeah. cool, only 100 yeah. years ago, uh, diabetics would have been in big trouble. Mm. Yeah, um, sure. So uh, that's quite, that's quite a, a significant event, I think. Mm. Um, uh, in 1931, uh, Spain became a republic after the overthrow of Alfonso the Thirteenth. Alfonso. Mm. So obviously, a lot of kings of Spain were called Alfonso, Alfonso which yeah. is quite interesting. Mm. Um, and then in 18, 1940, Italy annexed Albania, or Albania. as I love in uh, calendars too, mm-hmm. as I love in Captain Crowley's Mandolin, uh, Nicholas Cage, who plays Bertarelli. Uh, he says, "We are in campaign in Albania." He <laughs> says, "Albania, <laughs> <laughs> I just think. Uh, I got to say, Albania has got to be right up there in the worst countries in the world. One of the things, um, again, if you want to spend half an hour, uh, there's a brilliant YouTube series, which is which country do you love, which country do you hate? Mm. And this guy from Denmark, he goes all around the world. So, he, you know, he, 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 and basically saying to people, you know, which country do you most like, which country do you most dislike? I would say on the whole, the country that is most disliked would be America. Mm, really? Uh, yeah, definitely. Inflicted um, war and pain across. But um, the, world, the reason really? I said it, I would, if I was asked, I would uh, Albania would be right up there in the uh, in the countries yeah. I would not mm. want to be in. I, I was going to say there's a lot worse countries in America. Anyway, so that's uh, that's the end of the second part of on this week in history. Next, we have a really beautiful song from Maria Muldoon, bringing you the news of old on this week in history. With Paul Waite. And I am Paul Waite, and I am bringing you the news of old. And a lot of it has to be said. So, um, one of the great, um, one of the bravest things ever, I think. 1942, so George VI awarded the George Cross, which has never been done before, to the whole of Malta. Mm. Uh, of course, the Maltese, the Maltesers, mm. yeah, they're not chocolate coloured. No. I'm part Maltese. Oh, yeah, Drew, Drew's grandma's Gr- Maltese. You look a bit Maltese. Drew's grandma, the Mary Armstrong. So basically, Maltese. for those who don't know, Malta was in an incredibly strategic position mm. in the Mediterranean, uh, and the Germans obviously were desperate to take control of of Malta, and They're the Maltese were basically bombed to oblivion uh, every day for I don't know three years maybe, um, and it's quite interesting. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the only uh, aircraft that we sent to support the war. We're very old um, World War aircraft planes. carrier mm. planes, you know, like Sopworths right, and things. Um, mm. And of course, uh, the Maltese uh, held out. As a, 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 it's, it's a fact for you. Did you know that Malta is the country in the EU with the smallest population? Mm. Anyway, well, this one for you, isn't it? Mm. Mm. That's my yeah. trivia. I thought it was good. Was so a good it's one. a lovely place, isn't it? We went there on holiday, didn't we? We did. It was very, very yeah, fascinating history, it has to be said. 1949, sad moment really. Uh, the Republic of Ireland withdrew from the Commonwealth. Mm. Um, I still, you know, I still think that um, at the very least, uh, Ireland should be in the Commonwealth. It doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. Anyway, 1951, France, West Country, West Country, <laughs> mm. France, West Germany, and Benelux formed the European Steel and Coal Community, which is not something people would have known. So, no. what is effectively is the EU, the EU today was originally called the European Steel and Coal Community. Do you happen to know, um, boys, which countries are in Benelux? N- no, no, I don't, actually. No. I think it's good. You should be able to work it out. Benelux. B-E. Belgium. So what's with N? England. N. N-E. Uh, Norway. Ne- Netherlands. Netherlands. And Lux. Luxembourg. Yeah, so it's actually an f- official region called Benelux. Oh, wow. Yeah, there we are. So learn something every day, don't you? Yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, so they formed. Uh, I think um, I'm quite confident in predicting that uh, that will all fall apart before too long. 1951, <laughs> uh, the Knesset in uh, Israel declared the 13th of April to be Holocaust Day. So it was Holocaust uh, Day last week, and um, I was I uh, was proud to support my family, the members that are in fact not, not, not like me and Callum of the good faith. Um, <laughs> 
So I wonder, one of the good things about being Jewish is I like to say there's so many good jokes you can say, like, you know, fair Jews. <laughs> Got to pay them their fair Jews, yeah. Yeah, things like that. I, I, I do have a, lot, a bit of fun. Yeah. You've got to have a sense of humour, haven't That's you? That's it, you know? yeah. Um, a bit of banter. A bit of, bit of banter, yeah. And also, uh, no, 1951, 1951. 1955, the polio vaccine was invented. And again, um, I don't know if you know this, polio is actually an infectious disease. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can remember having my uh, polio vaccination, and um, I can remember it made my arm go pussy. Ooh, yeah. And I remember I played in a, a basketball match away at somebody mm. uh, with with a plaster on my. I vaguely polio remember me and Drew having it as well because obviously mm. all, everyone gets vaccinated in schools nowadays. I think like mm. year seven or something. So um, yeah. sorry, missed one in 1946. Syria declared independence from France. Of course, France was the dominant power throughout North Africa. Mm-hmm. So Libya, Syria. Mm-hmm. Uh, Morocco, Morocco, uh, very strong French influence, and of course, um, French was Morocco, is... French, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, oh. Of course, yes, very much so. I thought it was Spanish. Uh, did you? Mm. Sorry. 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first person to orbit Earth. Mm. Um, Russian. So guy. this was something I was very interested when I was a little boy, even like four. I remember being fascinated by the thought of that, and I, I knew his name as well. If you said to me, who's you know, who, who's the guy? I would have said, yeah, Yuri Gagarin. You know. Mm. Um, so um, that was quite a momentous, and to some extent, um, you could argue that sort of uh, certainly manned uh, uh, space flight, etc., has gone backwards. Yes, um, over my lifetime. It's so expensive, uh, isn't it? Although, to be fair, you know, we've now got much more sophisticated um, ships. You know, going out into the yeah. into satellites the satellites and past Pluto, etc. Well, Elon Musk has made like a mental spaceship, hasn't he? 1968, mm. uh, interesting one. London Bridge was sold to the U.S. oil company. Mm. To a US oil company and, and re re erected in Arizona. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah, so that's where it is to this day. Uh, the Americans obviously having no culture of their own. <laughs> um, 19, well, they don't, do they? Let's be honest. 1988, yes. Harvard patented a genetically engineered, a genetically engineered mouse. Can you oh, yeah. That? yeah. Yeah, That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Mm. Mm. I thought yeah. they can also grow human ears on mice. But anyway, that's just sort of going a bit weird. You wouldn't it? want to be the the, the, the mouse, would you? Maybe yeah. you're here. Really I can weird. think of a few people who work for me that could do with that. Um, <laughs> well, especially I? the mood I'm in at the moment. Um, <laughs> so, uh, where are we? We've got 2013. Two Earth-like planets are discovered orbiting a star um, in the Kepler system. Um, I, can't, I can't even read what that says. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think the, the, the Kepler 6-2, sorry. Is the, mm. the star is called Kepler 6-2. Uh, and two Earth-like planets were discovered orbiting it in 2013. Oh, 2011, uh, the Game of Thrones premiered on HBO. Um, I, I think it's true to first. say that Callum and I are both Game uh, complete Game of Thrones nuts. Yeah. Although I think the last season was so the first bad. few seasons were just uh, out out of this Incredible. world uh, mm. epic. Uh, and I think I've actually managed to do them all now. We've gone a bit over Wee. time, but I think the boys felt that. Um, about you know this was this was more important. So mm. that's the end of on this week in history today. Lots and lots and lots of facts for you. Um, and next we have three in a row, uh, and we have a uh, wonderful China crisis, um, and then we have um, a song which is on here I think because of Callum, uh, Hunger Child Blues and Tangs Van Zant. All right. Download at AspenWaitRadio.com or subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Podcasts.